Good evening again. And um, again, I did my training for climate reality in 2017 in Pittsburgh. And um, like I said, I'm the founder of Less Plastic Please. We just a grassroots organization decided we we're going to do something about plastic and one issue fell into the next. So we're just going and going and going. Um, but uh, plastic is near and dear to my heart. I feel that it covers all my concerns with the environment. So um, I'm fighting hard to reduce the plastic. And um, so you might not think I would start my presentation like this, but you know, plastic is amazing. It's lightweight, it's cheap, but we all know that's due to fossil fuel subsidies. It's strong, it's moldable, thousand uses, it lasts forever. It makes your life convenient, but those are exactly why we have a problem. And there's simply too much of it. Over the last 10 years, the fossil fuel industry has produced more plastic than over the last entire century. Plastic is a market segment that is driving the growth in the fossil fuel industry. The industry says it would continue to frack for plastic even if it didn't need oil. They are tanking as far as fossil fuels and so they're depending on plastic for their lifeline. So between 2008 and 2017, plastic production in the US has more than doubled. As this graph indicates, plastic wasn't made in any significant amount until the late 1950s. Plastic bags were not in stores until the 1970s. We can expect an increase in plastic by at least 5% each year, unless we change our ways. By the numbers, in 1950, 2 million metric tons of plastic was produced. In 2017, 8.3 billion metric tons. The difference between millions and billions, one million seconds is 11 days. One billion seconds is 31 and a half years. We have produced 18.2 trillion pounds of plastic since the 1950s. And how do you wrap your head around that? A billion elephants, 80 million blue whales. All these numbers are so overwhelming. And it's everywhere. The top 10 items on beach cleanups now are some form of plastic. So when are we going to say enough? Is the five trillion plastic bags that were made that's 160,000 bags per second with 1% being recycled. Is that enough? And where does it all go? Well, they say 9% is recycled, which I think is generous. 12% uh, is incinerated and 79% is just waste. Do we wanna live between landfills? Because quite literally, those are our choices. This stuff never goes away and it has nowhere to go. You know, those cases of water that people buy, it takes 450 years for each bottle to visibly disappear. If you went back in time, that is a time of Copernicus. Imagine what we are leaving future generations. And so what are we doing with all this plastic that we're making, right? Well, about 25% goes to cables and pipes. 25% goes to car parts. But almost 50% is used for disposables. That is the problem. The word disposable means they are not essential. They are made to be discarded. We cannot afford disposable plastic because plastic negatively impacts our environment, our health, our economy, our oceans, and our climate. This is just the obscene amount of packaging 
shown on this graph. And for all the plastic you see floating in the ocean, 70% ends up at the bottom of the ocean with unknown consequences. So plastic in the environment. We, again, we know it never goes away. It just breaks up and turns into microplastics, working its way into everything and everywhere. Plastic fragments have been found in 86% of sea turtles, 44% of seabirds. Styrofoam with possible carcinogens of benzene and styrene are highly toxic when ingested and can damage animals' lungs, nervous system, and reproductive organs. Even if they do not die, they are ill. The chemicals ingested by these animals can make their way up to this through the food chain onto your dinner plate. Plastic is suffocating our wildlife. And I've honestly lost count of how many whales are beached due to plastic in their guts. Plastic exacerbates national, natural disasters like floods by clogging storm drains, then leaving pooled water in its wake to serve as a breeding ground for mosquitoes, which can breed malaria in foreign countries. This photo on the right is exactly what happened in Bangladesh. Thankfully, after this flood, they banned plastic bags. Plastic is often burned for heat and cooking in third world countries and incinerated right here in Baltimore, releasing toxic chemicals such as dioxin, which is the main component of Agent Orange. And as a nurse, this is incredibly concerning to me. They have now found microplastics in the unborn human placentas. We are eating a credit card worth of plastic a week. 90% of bottled water has microplastics, 83% of tap water. There's new research that shows the sperm count has dropped 50% since the 1950s. Interesting correlation. One half of the babies born today will have infertility issues. A new environmental health network study on fracking found biomarkers for fracking chemicals in children at levels 91 times higher than average Americans. Phthalates that are used um, in, as a plastic softener it's found in fragrances, shower curtains, rubber duckies, nail polish, that new car smell is a probable human carcinogen. A human health organization called Project Tender found phthalates are damaging brains of developing children and calls for immediate ban of these synthetic chemicals. Oceans are now our dumping grounds. A garbage truck full of plastic empties into our waterways every minute of every day. And yet scientists estimate that 50 to 80% of oxygen produced on Earth comes from the oceans. Most of it comes from marine photosynthesizers like phytoplankton. The ocean is equal to four Amazon forests. The photo on the upper left is a photo of one of the five major, major garbage patches or gyres. Most folks envision it as floating garbage, but unfortunately it's not. It's more like soup. So those booms that clean up, that's gonna solve all the problems by cleaning up the ocean, it does something, but not nearly enough. Then we have our incredibly valuable coral. Not only is coral needed for to, to protect coastlines from erosion, it is essential for breeding and feeding 25% of all marine life. It is the most biodiverse area on the planet. It provides us with medicine and bone grafts, just to name a few. 
when plastic comes in contact with coral, plastic ba basically tears open the skin of the coral. It allows infection and death rates to go from 4% to 89%. In addition, plastic can block the sunlight leading coral to die. In the bottom picture is an explanation of bioaccumulation. That old plastic, again, never dies. It just turns into microplastics, those tiny pieces of less than five millimeters, the size of a pencil eraser head. But unfortunately, plastic and many toxic chemicals are what they call hydrophobic, which means they do not like water. So not only do we have tiny pieces of plastic, we have tiny pieces of plastic with high concentrations of dangerous chemicals, persistent organic compounds. The tiny sea creatures eat the plastic and again, works the way up the food chain into us. In our Chesapeake Bay, the oysters are hyperventilating. Their filtration is for the algae, but when it gets messed up with those microplastics, it causes them to hyperventilate because they need more and more algae to make up for all the plastic they're eating. Hyperventilation is stress. Stress leads to disease and death. And plastic in our economy. Plastic pollution in the world's ocean is known as marine ecosystem value. That cost society up to $2.5 trillion per year. Plastic waste is said to cost up to $33,000 per ton in reduced environmental value. And although it is hard to get an exact number, surprise, the fossil fuel industry is good at hiding money, it is fair to say we subsidize the oil industry to the tune of $20.5 billion a year. And how does that compare to subsidizing renewables? fossil fuel beats renewables by a seven to one margin. So plastic doesn't exacerbate climate change. Plastic is climate change. Plastic is the major driver of climate change and it will continue to be the major driver of climate change as we move towards renewables, unless we deal with plastic as if it's climate change, because it is. When the demand for petroleum drops, companies just ramp up their plastic production, failing to recognize the intimate connection between these two issues not only makes tackling these issues ineffective, but may also undermine the efforts on both fronts. Plastic will account for more than a third of the global growth of oil demand by 2030 in nearly half by 2050, more than trucks, aviation, and shipping combined. Not only do plastic production and waste add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, but plastic also appears to be reducing the ocean's ability to absorb those gases. So we know how important that is. If plastic were a country, it would be the fifth highest emitter in the world. The UN General Secretary stated, and I quote, we have less than two years to avoid runaway climate change, end quote. Concerning, yes, especially when you discover he said that in October of 2018. Just last week, the UN General Secretary announced a red alert on climate change, announcing country level commitments and actions are nowhere near enough to limit warming to two degrees Celsius, let alone 1.5. We are heading for 2.9 to 3.4 degrees Celsius of warming. And you know, reading the impacts of three degrees Celsius is almost too much to bear. If we wanna get a handle on this climate emergency, we must deal with all aspects of the climate crisis. All emissions must be counted, including the full life cycle of plastic. Plastic is, of course, a byproduct of fossil fuel. 
So we are using a non-renewable resource to make what? A plastic bag with an average lifespan of 12 minutes? And all this nonsense starts with fracking. That is, that picture on the left is a fracking well. And please notice how close those houses are to that. It starts with fracking and then the air pollution and water contamination due to the toxic chemicals used in fracking are just two issues with fracking. I do a whole presentation on fracking. Uh, it's a nightmare. And from the wellhead, ethane, the building blocks of plastic, is sent to the cracker factory, that picture in the center. As you can see, there was a fire there because plastic burns very quickly, which is why they have to add chemicals like flame retardants to plastic. And then um, once they crack the ethane, it makes ethylene, and then they bound it together to make polyethylene, and that is the building blocks for plastic. Um, and so all the chemicals that are added to plastic are dangerous, and all the chemicals that are released during the cracker practice is very frightening. So at every stage of plastic production, methane is released. And we all know that methane is the primary component of natural gas that is 84 times stronger than CO2 trapping heat in the first 20 years. But methane release doesn't even stop there. A study in 2018 was the first to discover that plastic is releasing methane even as it degrades. By 2050, the global plastic footprint will equal 615 coal fire power plants working at full capacity. Plastic is the most significant and rapid source of greenhouse gas. So that is the situation. So I told you it would be discouraging, but we have solutions. Ultimately, to tackle this, we need governments to regulate, businesses to innovate, and individuals to act. And so this is the increase in regulations. And so that it ended in uh, 2017. And I know it's just ramping up. You know, and, and last year, um, COVID halted many of the bills in Maryland. Uh, but some of the bills are moving along better this year uh, in Maryland. But um, the big news that I'm super excited about is the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act was originally introduced in 2020, and it will be reintroduced, um, expected to be reintroduced on the 22nd of this month. So this is the dream bill of anyone who has a disdain for plastic. It's federal legislation, which is exactly what we need. It has, these are just four components. It has a extended producer responsibility aspect, a plastic packaging tax, um, making a bottle bill, making recycling collections more consistent. Uh, but uh, the one that really touches my heart is that it includes a three year pause on all new plastic facilities. Right now, they are planning for five new plastic facilities. Uh, they, the Department of Energy projects the industry to grow by 85% over the next few decades. I can't even fathom. Uh, Brooke Lehrman did, uh, and I worked our, on this bill, the Extended Producer Responsibility Bill in Maryland this year. It, it was a learning year. I can honestly say when I started talking to people about it, even environmentalists didn't know what EPR was. So, um, it, but it's something that's now in everybody's headlights. It's a, a good year to um, move it forward and we hope to move that forward as well as the chemical recycling bill uh, for next year. Those are two critical, incredibly important bills for Maryland. Uh, so the Breakthrough from Plastic Pollution Act, our senators did not sign on last time and they haven't signed on this time yet either. We did meet with them. Um, if anybody wants to meet with them, call them up, set up an appointment, tell them you want them to co-sponsor. There's their phone numbers. Uh, you can call. Unfortunately, uh, when I have called recently with COVID, people are working from home, so it's more leaving a message, so it's a little bit harder to really get to somebody to talk. But it is um, 
worth the fight. This is a wonderful bill and I'm very proud of it. I know people who actually worked on it and they, they even made it better for this year. Um, and so businesses need to start acting up too. But I tell you, um, you have to be very careful with businesses and greenwashing. They make it sound like they're doing something good and they're not. So, um, but they are doing things that are putting things in the right direction. So we just need to keep the pressure on. If you see an item, if your eggs come in plastic, you know, contact email, they usually have little email addresses right on the box. Tell them, say, why are you putting eggs in plastic? Um, and to try to change their ways. But some businesses are doing a good thing. The Loop Store is a coalition of brands like Tide, Haagen-Dazs Ice Cream, and Crest. And so it's really like bringing back the milkman. Um, what it is is you, it, they come in stainless steel containers. You fill up your box and you um, send it off. And then when they give you all new, new, um, purchases and then you we use that and so it's a real loop story so you don't have any cardboard boxes you don't have any plastic boxes um, so it is something still new uh, you go to loopstore.com and you can look about it and have information another thing I'm really excited about and like I said I, we had just passed our Plastic Reduction Act, which gets rid of the nuisance plastic or puts them upon request. But one of the things when we were working on the bill was that both the citizens and the restaurants were frustrated with the amount of single-use plastic. So we are actually working to get Redish or a reuse model to come to Howard County to do a pilot program to see if we can truly make a reusable society. Um, so that is an exciting thing I'd be happy to talk to about in more detail if anybody's interested, but I'm excited about that. And so, but you have to do your part too. And I already can tell you guys are all great, um, you know, but just be dedicated to doing the right thing. You know, refuse, refusing single use plastic is one of the best things that you can do. And they say that people who make the biggest difference are the ones that do the little things consistently. So you gotta believe in that. And so what else can you do? You already sound like you're so involved and already doing so many things. So I'm really excited for you and all the work that you're doing. Um, I, and please know I'd be happy to support anyone in any way uh, to get things done because that's how we do it in Howard County. We um, you know, meet with our back in the day, met with our senators and testified and did tabling events because it really takes so much work as I'm sure you all know to get a bill passed. But ultimately we need to do this. We need to refuse disposable plastic. Reusables have to be our future and um, that's what we have to work towards because we all love her. So I will stop sharing. <laughs>